Dark Star, there is a world premier league for golf. There is. It exists. It don't have to wait for Rory and his group to form one. The world premier golf league is called the majors. The major majors, not the mini majors that we want to have desperately that would be interleague play between the two tours. No, no, the major majors. Why do I say this? Because simply now with golf in two different places, the PGA Tour and Live Golf, two different tours that don't talk to each other, don't play with you, don't play each other. The only place that the best players can get together and play is where, Dark Star? The old majors. The old the majors. Old the majors. The major majors. The major majors. The major majors. It's like jumbo shrimp. The major majors <laughs> is where you can play now, the best of the best, and everywhere else is second class in that sense. Maybe you have a lot of good players on live, and maybe you have a lot of good players on the PGA Tour, but it's not the best, obviously, by definition. Some are over there and some are over there. But the majors find themselves, and I know, Darkstar, what you like to think of as <gasps> conspiracy by coincidence. I didn't plan it, probably, but... They find themselves, they look around the room when they hobnob at some fancy club, be that Seminole or Augusta or the National Golf Links or who knows where else, Cypress Point. When they get together some piece of the aristocracy, they find themselves in a very interesting position. Hey. Well, they find themselves in a very advantageous position. That too. They're they're kicking back and they're watching the PGA Tour and live golf to a lesser degree. Uh, They're cannibalizing themselves. And the majors are the only place where the stars are all together. The stars are all aligned. When you think about it, Augusta, nobody's ever complained about the Augusta field, even though it is such a shortened truncated field versus the other majors because the stars are all there. So when you put the five top guys, you know, DJ, DeChambeau, Kapka, Smith, and Rom back at Augusta, and they added Neiman. So what did they do? They sat around and they said, how do we legitimize our tournament and and say we have the best players in the world there? And and they sat down and they said the only guy we really add is Neiman. And I think once we do that, we're fine. So we have the six really stars on live, the, the superstars. And I think they're fine because we were we were really combing the world of golf to try to find a name that delegitimizes the Masters this year. And, and the names we came up with really weren't that compelling, were they? Mm, apparently. Let, let's set the table for that point. And the, that point is... If the the majors the major majors find themselves in this advantageous position where they're the only game in town now for golf fans to go to see the best players play, hey, that's good for us. Why would we be in a hurry to change that? We don't really want these tours to come together. Maybe they're thinking, or at least some of them are thinking that. But the question then becomes: Augusta being the first major coming up, right? Did they do it on purpose? Where they scoured the world, as Dark Star just said to find out if anybody that needs to be there needs an invitation because they're not otherwise exempt into the tournament. Now, happily for the Masters, the top brand name players over at uh, LIV are already exempt because they're major winners and they're there already. And Tyrrell Hatton is within the the global uh, top 50, also qualified. And then it, then they don't have to t- worry too much. And the old stars, Mickelson, those guys, they are obviously lifetime. You well, lifetime. They get exempt until they don't want to play anymore at the Masters. So we're in good shape. Except, is there anybody missing? Is there anybody that we have to have that isn't meeting any of the other qualifications? And Dark Star, you scoured the world yourself, as did we think Augusta, because they're smart. And lo and behold, what name came up? Sure, Joaquin Neiman received an invitation. They sat down for 30 seconds. It was one of those, you know, five minutes for coffee. The first four were for coffee, and it was a five-minute meeting. Eh, let's just, we'll, we'll call Neiman, right. and then we're done. You're giving, them, you're giving them a lot of credit at Augusta, and maybe they deserve it. There must have been some internal, I don't want to, let, let's not say debate, let's say dialogue, although it could have been a heated debate. Who knows? But you, I can imagine some old guard at Augusta saying something like, screw them. If you're not qualified because you bolted the PGA Tour, you haven't won there, you bolted the OWGR events, so you don't have enough points, too bad for you. 
And uh, now there's got to be a few or more than a few members at Augusta that think that, but then well, cooler heads I, I don't, prevailed. Right. Uh, or did something so. else happen? Did they conjure up the ghost of Bobby Jones and say, what would Bobby Jones do? That's what I would do if I were Fred Ridley. I think... I think that's how they all are sitting there. That's why I, do, I not think there was a heated discussion. They are in the catbird seat. They're they're watching the other two tours, you know, especially the PGA Tour, just self destruct in front of our eyes. And they're just sitting there going, you know, we're in a good position until and through twenty six because that's when DJ and DeChambeau's um, exemption runs out. So they're in a good position for another couple of years just to sit back and see what happens. So, no, I don't think there was a, a heated discussion. We put in Neiman this year. We might have to put in somebody next year. Uh, you but, think everybody at Augusta just went along with that? The guy's not qualified. He's not getting OWGR points. What would he, why would we invite him? Because he's playing so well, and he's a young, hot player. Yeah, but and he's we, not qualified. It, he's not qualified by our qualification standards. You can imagine some of these old guard guys saying that. You're saying, I don't agree with you, but you're saying that they all were singing from the same songbook at Augusta. I am saying they're doing that because they are just sitting back. That's relaxed, not the question. The question is, do they agree the on it? Do all the guys there agree on it? I, I think the vast majority do, so it was a no-brainer. Uh, my suspicion is that there was more dialogue than that. But when Fred Ridley, who is, I think, the voice of reason, among others, says, hey, what would Bobby do? Well, Bobby would invite the best players. And then, yeah, but I, I think the difference between Augusta and, say, the guys at SSG or the guys that are dealing with the PGA Tour, when you're at Augusta, you check your ego at the door because everybody's mm, there. Everybody's the same. Yeah, I, that, I, I like that egalitarian thing. But, well, it's not terribly important, but I just wanted to make the point that, you know, who knows? But it's the, for the audience here, it's the critical element is if they did it, and I think they did. And I think Dark Star is agreeing with me. Is that true? That they did go and look to make sure that they had the world's top 50 in the field by hook or by crook. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. so, too. I think so, despite, too. Despite Ustase and being a top player, he's still getting up there in age. You know, the Burmeister. Well, let's get into that next. Let's get into that next. Let me put a dot on what I just said. Then we'll go right there. That's a good point. That who did they miss, if anybody? Because I can hear the audience now saying, well, why is not Louie there? Yeah, that's a legit question, and then we'll talk about why that is. If you're a fan of the show, be sure to subscribe to our new audio podcast. That is where you will get topics that will never get to YouTube, and there are a lot of those that we like to talk about that will never make it to YouTube. So uh, look in the description below for the link over to Substack. That's where you can subscribe to the podcast, and thank you again for being a fan.